Alrighty then, it's time for another Jungle Cane game. Let's get this show on the road. Which one? And this one is a Rost one. Hooray for consistency. So I also want to address a few things before you know the action starts. The beginning is just kind of farming, attempted ganks, and that kind of stuff. I want to address the fact that you know some people were really upset over some of the things I said, and also clarify on some of the things I did say. So. For starters, when I said uh, talked uh, about Ross versus Shadow Kane, I wasn't trying to say that Shadow Kane doesn't have a power spike. It does, but it's more of a multiplier rather than you know just straight out addition. If you're doing well as Shadow Kane really well, you kind of just win the game, right? And an assassin will just kind of get you know start rolling people. But jungle assassins kind of suffer from one thing in that they don't exactly quote unquote carry. They set your team up to carry. Like, you can't possibly, you know, annihilate the entire team unless you're, like, a million miles ahead of them. But you can delete important characters so the rest of your team can actually do something, like, you know, push towers or wipe out the rest of the team. But if your team isn't really doing very much, then you're not really going to be able to. Ross, on the other hand, kind of works in a similar fashion, but he kind of, you know, survives to continuously do that. You know, he just sticks through the fight. And he can melt the front line, which is usually what a lot of people seem to have a problem with. Like, you know, walking into tanks or focusing the tank or something. But either way, consistency is a great thing. He doesn't need as many items. Shadow Kane is fun and he has his uses. But again, consistency is very important to junglers. And honestly, he's a lot more like uh, Yasuo. And that's a big question I wanted to ask a few of you here, or all of you here. Is Yasuo a good champion? Because time and time we, again, we've seen that you know Yasuo can win games, but a lot of times he's a pretty big liability, and that happens to with other champions too. You know, uh, like Riven and stuff. They they can do good things, they can dominate games, but they can also just lose hard because they're you know debilitated. Also, with the whole early game thing. By the way, here I just the amount of screw up I had here was immense because everyone was talking. I was listening to the stream while I was playing with my friends, or friend, and I just kind of got confused. But either way, I gotta, I'll, I gotta kill off the Leona, or at least, you know, Banana Lady gets it. But anyways, with the whole thing about Jungle Kane and having, you know, weak sustain, I probably should have said it more as, you know, recovery. If you get even spanked a little as Kane early on, or, you know, you don't get it rolling, you kind of fall behind pretty bad. Or at least, you know, you start getting weaker in your clearing. Because you kind of need that momentum. And momentum is part of the whole sustain package for junglers. Like, let's see. It, a lot of jungle assassins or carries and that kind of stuff do suffer this. So it's not just, you know, unique to Kane. Like, you know, if Master Eve early on you hit him in the face and, you know, stop his momentum from farming, you will notice how, you know, slow he is and how less impactful he is until he sort of tries to catch up. So again, it's not unique to Kane. It's just a thing that Chan junglers like him tend to just suffer from. But yeah, in this game, you can see I'm just kind of absolutely dominating, and I'm just getting a lot of honestly opportunistic kills because the enemy team is you know eating my teammates alive. So I'm just kind of in the area to finish them off or something. But either way, Kane, to his credit, does have the whole high ass damage and interesting pathing initiations or, uh, for ganks and whatnot. But as we all know, that doesn't always guarantee a kill unless the enemy is really out of place or you have a teammate that can hold him down and allow you at least, you know, get a couple of volleys in there. And like a lot of people had an issue with me calling him a farm jungler. You know, the thing is, farm junglers, you, they, they, main, you know, they maintain the momentum of farming and, you know, doing that kind of stuff. But that doesn't necessarily mean they can't go for ganks. Like if the opportunity is there to, you know, destroy somebody, or when you know when your ultimate is off cooldown because some farm junglers do have pretty good cool uh, pretty high, pretty strong ultimates but they have a really high cooldown you can waltz in there and do something you know finish someone off or whatever the opportunity is there to do something but most of the time you're going to be wanting to control the map or at least farm a bit you're not really trying you know to force ganks or nothing because that puts you down behind quite a bit and that's one thing I've playing Kane a lot is that if you try to force these ganks, especially since a lot of people seem to be telling me that you should try to do that, you're going to fall, be uh, fall behind quite a bit. I've had those games where, you know, I wanted to test out the whole... After a lot of the comments, I was playing those games just testing out, trying to get the attacks off people to transform. That just ended up making me, you know, fall behind in terms of gold. Instead, I ended up focusing on only killing people 
if the opportunity was there. You know, that's kind of what jungler motif is. And by the way, here I owe, owe my washing there this fucking Evelyn. Um, and farming as much as possible. Although, to be fair, my farm isn't all that impressive. It's just a lot of kills. It's just sort of falling in my goddamn hands. So there you go, right? But in other games I've played with Shadow King and whatnot, like, you know, I just try to invade the enemy jungler and steal everything. And, then, you know, a lot of people thought, you know, that so that's unique to K. No, that's what farm junglers do. You see a camp, you eat that camp, and then you walk away. Kane has that going for him really well. It's again a, a farm jungler trait, something that farm junglers really like. To be able to just do kill camps and then run away. And if your opponent is way weaker than you, of course kill them. But most of the time, you want to get out of there because if you get caught by the enemy team, like if the enemy, like if I was trying to invade Diana before I was, you know, Rost. I mean, if I was trying to invade the Evelyn and Diana showed up, I could possibly die. So, you know, usually you only go for really opportunistic situations. You don't try to force a fight. Because if you get caught, you die. And think of it, same thing with like Trindamir and Master Yi. If you're invading and you see someone with low health, you try to, you know, stab them and kill them. But if you're not, if even if you're like full health and maybe you could possibly kill them, chances are you might not make it out alive, so it might not be worth it. Anyways... I'm 8, 1, and 3, alright? I, so I'm Rost, I have uh, dus the Dusk Blade, I can pretty much kill anybody in one combo. And I can also just annihilate the entire front line if I catch them. And you're gonna get to see that. This is probably, this is why I think Ross is probably, which is straight out one of the most powerful junglers in the game right now. His only weakness is that he's stuck to Kane, and if you don't get him transformed early enough, you might miss a lot of his ridiculous power. It's just like... Delicious. I know, I know, I'm fed. But that's a lot of damage for a character that's, you know, bruiser and has all this sorts of weird, wacky survivability and whatnot. It's just really gross to be able to go in there and just annihilate someone's health bar. And I know I have items, but in other games where I've played Ross, that I've been like, you know, one item or 1.5 items, and I've done similar things. Uh, though, to the credit of the people in the comments the other day, I did start maxing out W first as Ross because I didn't understand the math all that much. And I've it's even made it even stronger. So considering the fact that I was doing really well with Ross, even though I was maxing out Q first, you know, that just kind of tells you the power of Ross. The power of, you know, Shoto anime. Anyways. Yeah, at this point, the enemy team can't really deal with me unless I do something really stupid like defend a tower against like four people and sort of walk up to someone that has crowd control. But as you know, I don't tend to do those kinds of mistakes. <clears throat> Anyhow, yeah, I, it's not that Shadow Kane is bad, it's just Ross is consistent. Ross has less of a sort of gold maintenance and. It's very important for junglers not to rely on, you know, having that perfect early game. Most of the time, most games, you at most, you'll get one kill or something. And you can't really, you know, snowball to control with that. And, yeah. Yeah. But anyways, I digress. Okay, so, and the thing is, even though Rost is just more consistent or anything, it, that... You're not making a really like grim trade, like oh, are you are you trading your much more powerful mid late game for you know consistency? No, because Rost is just kind of good regardless. And to be honest, what I've also noticed is that Shadow Kane's late game, like everybody sort of being on par, yeah, he can still snub out an AD carry or something. But most of the time, they're just gonna remove him, or just gonna you know not play that poorly, or they'll have like Guardian Angel or something and make it less effective. Ross's late game is pretty much better than Shadow Kane, just basically because he's a bruiser, just by the nature of being, you know, beefier and being able to deal with the front line a bit more. You know, and he can still sometimes just assassinate an AD carry anyways. Plus, I love this entire thing, attack, uh, Varus, and you know, just, oh, I survive all this, thankfully, you know, Unicorn Sister is here, and she's helping me annihilate these guys, boom, knock up on W, survive anyways. If I had turned around, I didn't think that Soraka would be able to heal me right there, I, and I was going to use my E to heal myself, I had turned around, I would have killed the Evelyn super easily, and probably caught the Jace and destroyed him too. Ah, uh, But yeah, Rost snowballs just as hard. As Shadow Kane. Shadow Kane has that, you know, like annihilation combo where you just sort of murder somebody. But Ross is like, you know, just slap, like just gouging people's faces off. Just slap that. I love it. 
Both of them are fun to play, honestly. I'm not even doubting that. Just the the beginning shenanigans is very frustrating because you're just mostly trying to farm up and you're hoping for the best because if you don't have this, uh, if you don't get going, you're just kind of falling behind. Because believe it or not, or accept it or not, I better say that because a lot of people won't. Kane is a very particular in a jungler in that his mid game is really bad. Like you remember, everyone has a mid game and you can shorten that mid game by obviously snowballing, getting to that late game a lot sooner and you know getting them really strong. But if you don't do that, obviously, and you won't always do that, more likely you won't actually do that. You're gonna have a low in strength, and Kane has that. You like if you haven't transformed it, base Kane is weak. So your mid game is really bad. Same thing with like you know, Yasuo and Riven characters. If they're not really you know snowballing out of control already, they're gonna start getting you know kited or killed before they get to do anything, or they don't have the entire damage just to annihilate an entire team. So that's Kane's main weakness. He has a dip in power in power around mid game if he, you know, he hasn't done anything. So yeah, hopefully that makes more sense. I'm not calling, you know, Shadow Kane useless, I'm just saying he's far more risky than you probably want to be playing with. And someone like Kha'Zix is for a jungle assassin has a lot less risk, and that's why I was just talking about, you know, mentioning that. I've already gotten into huge links about Kha'Zix in other videos, so we'll leave it at that. I was just using this in order to talk to about that or address it, and also show some really brutal game rocks, I mean, uh, gameplay, yeah. And remember, if you enjoyed the video, make a comment below in the comment section and also give the video a like. That helps the channel a lot more than you think.